I'm immune to it by now. Oh. No. So. The Muscatine City Council will come to order. <coughs> Fran, as a matter of record, would you do a roll call, please? Councilmember Lorette. Present. Fitzgerald. Present. Matt Fig. Present. Shahadi. Present. Bynum. Present. Phillips. Present. Spread. Present. All present, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you, Fran. Folks, would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you and welcome everyone. Uh, item number four in the agenda is communications from the citizens. Uh, if we have anyone in council chambers that would like to talk to council about an issue or an item that's not on the agenda tonight, please come to the podium. Tell us your name and your address, please. My name is Jessica Brackett. I live at 1516 Washington Street. Um, tonight I'm here though as the Executive Director of Clean Air Muscatine. And I'm here tonight to request that the city co-sponsor an event that we're planning. Um, the title of the event is going to be Exploring Muscatine's Energy Future. And this really developed out of an event that we were, a smaller event that we were planning um, with Tim Dwight. You might remember he's an Iowa football player, went pro. Um, today he works on solar and small wind. And so he was going to come in and do a presentation um, about how individuals, um, uh, basically the rate of return on investments regarding solar and wind at the individual level, and then also examining a little bit at the community level and business level as well. So that's where the event started. Um, we decided that we would like to expand that event to a half a day event. Um, it's going to be November 8th um, and it's going to start at 1230 and end about 430. Um, and we're bringing in a number of other folks now. Um, first we've got Dr. Scott Spack from the University of Iowa. Um, he's a professor there um, in engineering and um, he is going to talk about um, rate of return on investment, um, how uh, energy transition um, affects community development um, and, and, and economic growth. Um, then we've got Dr. Maureen McHugh. Um, she is a professor at the University of Iowa in public health. And um, she's also the head of Iowa Physicians for Social Responsibility. Um, she's going to touch on um, energy or fossil fuels and their effect on health. Um, then Tim is going to do, he's kind of the, a, a highlight of the, of the day, and he's going to have a longer presentation um, about what I mentioned before, about um, uh, how solar works and wind works and how, um, how folks can work at different levels from, from the household to the business to the community level on these issues. Um, then we'd also like to pull in um, some of the businesses in town um, that have already been working on these issues in terms of energy efficiency um, and energy transition Really, we would like to highlight the positive work that's already been done in the community and, and just to help promote um, more positive actions. Um, overall, the goal of the event is to educate the community um, about where our energy comes from, to highlight the success stories of businesses um, already in the community, and then to present options um, for individuals and businesses and the community for energy efficiency and energy transition. So tonight I'm just here to request that the, the, the uh, city co-sponsor this event. And really all we're asking um, for with this co-sponsorship is just that your name be on it and um, maybe that this information be sent out um, on communication channels that the city may already have. Very good. Uh, Council, any questions for Jessica? So in terms of co-sponsorship, you're mm -hmm. not asking for any funding of the event. You're just looking to have City Muscatine name Correct. on it. Correct, yes. Uh, Jessica, I would recommend that you stay in contact with Greg uh, Monsager, City Administrator, and uh, keep those lines of communication open, okay? Okay, great, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else in Council Chambers wish to address Council? <clears throat> okay, we'll move along to item five, consent agenda. Uh, the following items are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the Council member so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda which includes items 6A through B, items 8A through E, 
filing of communications 12A and tonight's bills totaling $1,750,000. $361.45, as well as journal entries and receipt summaries for June and July 2012. Move Looking for a motion, Council. Move its approval. Uh, that was Jeanette. Second. And second by Scott. Any discussion, Council? It's a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> okay, moving. Down to item 11 from the city administrator. The presenter for city council's consideration is the first reading of an ordinance amending title two boards and commissions, chapter 11, Historic Preservation Commission. The Historic Preservation Commission established on September 21st, 2000 was, was composed of seven members who each served three years. Because of the special requirements for potential members to have a demonstrated interest or training in historic preservation or related field, the pool of applicants for openings on the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, lost my place there, can be more uh, restrictive uh, than for other city commissions and or board meetings. The proposed amendment would reduce the membership of the HPC from seven to five and would also increase the term of commission member a commission member from three to five years. The proposed amendment would also require that all future applicants and members live within the city limits. Is there a motion to approve the first reading of the ordinance as submitted? So I'll move, Your Honor. A uh, motion by Bob. Second. Second by Tom. Any discussion, Council? I do have a question regarding uh, the restriction to the city limits. Um, that would seem contradictory to what the reasoning for the request. It would seem to shrink the pool of potential candidates. Why would we want someone sitting on a city commission that's not a city resident would be my concern. I'd agree with you. Uh, the, <coughs> the, the only other board that I can think of off the top of my head that does not have, that has a uh, representation, representation outside city limits is, uh, is power and water and that's because they have a a service area that extends beyond the city's uh, boundaries um, the in the library as well. They have one. Okay, thank you. But beyond that, I mean, this is an entity that's focused on uh, activity within the city limits. But they have allowed county people to be on the commission in the past. Well, I believe that happened inadvertently. I, uh, is, is my understanding that uh, that person um, moved outside and they were not aware of that uh, transition. Okay. Well, I was just wondering because the reasoning given is that we can't find enough people, so why would you shrink the pool? But right. <coughs> Anyone else, Council? Can anybody tell me what the special requirements are that make this such a hard thing to do? I mean, it, you talked about how there's a unique skill set of some kind, or at least that's what I seem to get out of it. So what, it, it, in, the, in the language here, it says because of the special requirements for potential members. It, is there you know, I think Devin uh, uh, Pettit is probably the person that's as astute yeah. to those requirements as any, anyone. Devin, would you uh, help us out here? Devin Pettit, 618 Walnut Street, MHPC member. Um, it's not so much special uh, requirements as much as it is the amount of work that can go into being on the commission. There are times when in the past, we have done historic preservation districts, and we have done a lot of the work ourselves, doing the research, writing up the reports. Um, so that can take time. Now, we don't have any plans to do that in the near future, uh, but it, it can take some time. We also have to have continuing education sort of requirements uh, as well every year, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's actually more the activities that, that take place <coughs> after you become a member and that you can handle that those activities right that you can handle con continuing education <coughs> right but to, to actually to be assigned to that commission um, wouldn't necessarily cause you to need to be a, a contractor or a right. historian it's always a, nice to have that mix of people uh, okay. but Thank you. Anyone else, Council? Thanks, Devin. Appreciate it very much. <clears throat> uh, any other discussion, Council? This is a roll call vote beginning with Bob. Aye. And uh, Osama? Aye. 
And Scott? Aye. Phil? Aye. Mark? Aye. Tom? Aye. And Jeanette? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item B, presented for City Council's <coughs> consideration, is the second and final reading of an ordinance vacating a public right of way within the City of Muscatine. A request has been received from HNI for the vacation of a portion of alley number one off Mulberry Avenue in block 16. HNI intends to maintain the vacated alley as an access route uh, to a parking lot. The Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved this request. Staff is requesting that City Council waive the third reading and adopt the ordinance on the final on final reading. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on the final reading and direct its publication as required by law? So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Tom. Second, Your Honor. Second, Phil. Any discussion, Council? <coughs> roll, also, a roll call vote beginning with Tom. Aye. And Jeanette? Aye. Bob? Aye. Osama? Aye. Scott? Aye. Phil? Aye. Mark? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item C, presented for City Council's consideration, is a resolution authorizing the sale of city property to HNI Corporation. In its previous action, City Council took action to vacate the por a portion of Alley No. 1 off of Mulberry Avenue in Block 16. It would now be appropriate to adopt the resolu resolution authorizing the sale of this property to the HNI Corporation. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Uh, that would be Osama and I need second. 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 second here. Phil, discussion, Council? <coughs> Roll call vote beginning with Osama. Aye. Uh, Scott? Aye. Phil? Aye. Mark? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. And Bob? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item D, presented for City Council's <laughs> consideration, is a resolution approving an executed deed to HNI Corporation. City Council has authorized the sale of a portion of Alley No. 1 off of Mulberry, Ave Mulberry Avenue in Block 16 to the HNI Corporation. It is now necessary for City Council to adopt the resolution approving uh, the executed deed to HNI Corporation. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Uh, that would be Mark. Second. And a second by Tom. Any discussion, Council? Another roll call vote beginning with Mark. Aye. Tom? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. Bob? Aye. Osama? Aye. Scott? Aye. And Phil? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item E. Presented for City Council's consideration is a request to approve the purchase and sales agreements for the Pierce property. The city has been working on a project to reconstruct Colorado Street from a rural road section to an urban arterial road. Three separate roadway alignments were considered, uh, with the preferred alignment requiring the acquisition and demolition of a mattress store owned by the Pierce family business. The city entered into, in, entered into an agreement with a third party to negotiate the purchase of the property utilizing the Iowa Department of Transportation guidelines. The Pierce family agreed to the terms and conditions of the purchase agreements, which are now being forwarded to the city council for their consideration and action. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Uh, that was Phil. Second. Second, Scott. Uh, discussion, Council? Steve, did you have, have comments uh, specific to, to this issue? Steve, did you want to just comment on the, on the description of the property? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I did try to point that out in the cover memo, but from the time we had the original sales agreement or the purchase agreement to the time when we actually received the acquisition plats, we also negotiated a, an easement across a 15-foot kind of no-man's land that was being discussed between Come and Go and, and, uh, and the Pierce family. Come and Go quick claimed that 15-foot strip to the Pierce family, so we negotiated that piece as well, so we have all of the property now for, for that uh, area if we, if we go through with the agreement. <coughs> However, there's a difference now between the acquisition plat, which does reflect the description including that 15-foot easement, and what was originally on the sales agreement, purchase agreement. So we'll, we will make that correction and, and have the uh, Pierce family uh, initial that move forward accordingly. Any questions for Steve, Council? Steve, the original <coughs> purchase agreement got a lot of attention. Um, just for the public's knowledge, this purchase agreement does not include any 
land transfers. Is that correct? Um, this is a this is a essentially a cash settlement with the city. There is no direct exchange of existing city real estate for this related to this transaction. Thank you. Anyone else, Council? Very good. Thank you, Steve. So voice vote, uh, folks. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 7 0. That was item E. Now down to item F. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution setting a public hearing on an amendment to the Consolidated Urban Renewal Plan. In July 2012, <coughs> the state of Iowa began new reporting requirements for cities utilizing urban renewal programs authorized under Iowa law. In part, the new changes require cities to list specific projects that may be undertaken and funded through the use of one or more of those programs. Prior to any consideration of an amendment uh, to this existing urban renewal plan, a public hearing is required. This public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 15th, 2012 at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So, so moved, Your Honor. I will give that to Osama, and I heard somebody over I'll here. I'll second that. No? Okay. And uh, discussion council? It's a roll call vote, uh, beginning with Osama. Aye. And Scott. Aye. And Phil. Aye. Mark. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. And Bob. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Item G, presented for City Council's consideration as a resolution setting a public hearing on the City of Muscatine's 2012 to 2014 Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, or DBE, goals. Uh, a federal aviation, the Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Highway Administration, and other federal guidelines require federal grant recipients to e expend uh, more than $250,000 in a fiscal year to develop and submit to the appropriate agency a DBE goal, which can now be set for a three-year period. The City of Muscatine wishes to set a fiscal year 2012 through 14 DBE goal of 5% uh, for those projects receiving federal funds provided no alternative DBE goal has been identified. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This public hearing will take place on Thursday, <coughs> November 1st, 2012 at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Uh, that's Jeanette and a second. 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 Tom, discussion, Council. Roll call vote beginning with Jeanette. Aye. Bob. Aye. Osama. Aye. And Scott. Aye. Phil. Aye. Mark. Aye. Tom. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item H presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution accepting completed work identified as rehabilitate airfield pavements at the, at the municipal airport and authorizing final payment. City Council took action on June 21st, 2012 to award the bid for this project to high brand industrial contractors in the amount of $52,889.83. The project has been completed with one change order in the amount of $5,707.86 for a total project cost of $58,597. Dollars uh, and 69 cents. The project has been reviewed by the city's uh, project engineer and is found to be in compliance with the approval plans and specifications. It is staff's recommendation that the city council adopt the resolution accepting the completed work for this project and authorizing final payment to high brand industrial contractors. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So, so move, Your Honor. Oh, everybody all at once. We'll give that to Bob. And a second? <coughs> second, Your Honor. Second, Scott. Discussion, Council. Okay, roll call vote beginning with Bob. Aye. Osama. Aye. Scott. Aye. Phil. Aye. Mark. Aye. Tom. Aye. And Jeanette. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> Item I, presented for City Council's <laughs> consideration, is a resolution awarding the contract for the Mad Creek Sewer Extension Project. Nine bids were received for this project with a low bid from Cornerstone Excavating in the amount of $994,415. The engineer's estimate for the project was 
$1,514,900.75. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Uh, Mark, second? Second. Second Osama. Uh, discussion, council? John, I believe you, you, you want to talk a little bit about this or you have a presentation? John Lutz, City Engineer. We received the bids and uh, reviewed the bids and uh, there was a lot of interest out there. We had nine bidders. Uh, you know, they, they did range from 994000 to $1.5 million. And uh, uh, it's just the way the contractors looked at it. Uh, there were some pretty competitive prices on the main line, 15-inch uh, sanitary sewer. Uh, some people thought tree clearing would be more difficult and they had higher prices on that and the uh, uh, mobilization was up and down but uh, Cornerstone excavating went after it and and put it just under a million and we think that's a the city's uh, comfortable with funding for that amount we think it's a good project council any questions for and you John? did check some references on that yes uh, for the public's knowledge yes uh, the engineer checked with uh, a couple references, uh, other engineers who had worked with this firm from Washington, Iowa, and they're comfortable <coughs> and they recommended them for the work. Anyone else, Council? Thank you, John. Any other discussion? This is a roll call vote as well, beginning with uh, Mark. Aye. Uh, and uh, Tom. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. Bob. Aye. Osama. Aye. Scott. Aye. And Phil. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item J, presented for City Council's consideration, is a resolution accepting the completed work and authorizing final payment for the Harrison Street Extension Project. In June, in June, June 7, 2012, the city entered into an, an agreement with Higher Construction in the amount of $510,999.30 for this project. The project has been completed with two change orders totaling $147,107.78, which did not include the reduction of existing bid items totaling $37,259.37, bringing the total contract amount to $620,847.72. Subtracting the $65,400 to be reimbursed by the school district brings the net construction cost for the project to $555,447.72. It is staff's recommendation the resolution be adopted accepting the completed work and authorizing final payment to hire construction. Is there a motion to, to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. That's uh, Phil. Second. And second, Mark. Any discussion, Council? Roll call vote beginning with Phil. Aye. Mark. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. Bob. Aye. Osama. Aye. And Scott. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Item K, presented for City Council's consideration, is a request from the fire department to purchase a new fire engine. As a part of the current fiscal year budget, the department had requested $490,000 for the purchase of a new fire engine. The city's approved budget included assigned funding of $250,000 from the general fund toward the intended future year 2013-2014 purchase of this fire engine. The balance, estimated at $240,000, was to be funded from the 2013-2014 budget if sufficient funding would be available. With the general fund balance at the end of the fiscal year 2011-2012 exceeding expectations, a prepayment discount and savings uh, over expected 2013 vehicle cost increases, staff is requesting City Council consider consider authorizing the fall yeah the fall amount for the uh, oh, that should be full amount oh. I think right <laughs> typo there the full amount uh, for the engine purchase uh, in the current 2012-2013 budget, which will require a budget amendment. Uh, the estimated cost for the new fire engine in the color of red, I understand, is $497,000 inclusive of the prepayment discount. Is there a motion to adopt the, the uh, oh, I'm sorry, is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? 
So moved, Your Honor. That would be Bob. Second. Second, Scott. Discussion, Council. Does that mean we would be purchasing the fire engine this year in 2012? We'd be purchasing this fiscal year rather than spreading the cost over two fiscal years, yes. And that's in order to get that prepayment discount, um, increased cost um, expected next fiscal year um, uh, due to NFPA uh, changes. And um, so, yes. When do those changes go into effect? Is that January 20, 1? 2013, was it? 13, 14. 13, 14 fiscal year. Next how, fiscal year. How much is the prepayment discount? Uh, six and a half six percent and a half. right now. Uh, it's anticipated uh, in November, December to drop to five and a half percent. Anyone else, Council? Cherry, when do you think that we'd take possession of an engine? Uh, they're telling us seven months. Uh, we've been working on this project for the last couple years. Uh, we've asked for a new engine the last couple budget cycles. So we, we pretty much have the specs ready to go. Uh, we actually downsized a little bit. Uh, our design has switched from a top mount pump to a side mount pump and it shortens the, the wheel span down a little bit and brings the cost down. Uh, normal cost of inflation, uh, fire truck purchase uh, cost goes up about 3% every year. So about fourteen dollars to $15,000, the same fire truck will go up every year. So uh, we have the specs ready to go, um, usually give them about 30 days to bid on it. So uh, we're, we're pretty much ready to move forward on this once you approve it. Who's the manufacturers that you're... Uh, well, they'll go out to oh. all, all the vendors, and they'll have to bid on it, and then we'll look at the bids. <clears throat> and there really aren't that many manufacturers, are there? Uh, there's, qu there's quite a few. There's quite a few manufacturers. And so we budgeted 250000 this fiscal year. Correct. And so the balance would be 247000 is what we're looking at right now and we in spending it up front rather than up front this fiscal year rather than setting aside 250 this year and then next fiscal year coming to the city council with the with the final allotment we talked about it at budget time um, and for a couple of reasons we talked about the prepayment we talked about the increased cost in the next fiscal year do a little bit more research and um, as presented last week with the increase in the fund balance it seemed a, a prudent thing to do save dollars now to give another one percent of its weight. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what? They give another one percent of its a white fire truck. Oh. Mm -hmm. per, What's a the red reason? one costs more Explain money. Explain to them the reason why why your favorite color is red. <laughs> because Osama's favorite color is red. The tr so traditional the, traditional well, color. You can, can talk about favorite. Color. <laughs> so does, so Every, does everyone has their own opinion. <laughs> Any other discussion regarding other than color regarding? I, Chief, I just wanted to point out something. When we talked about budget performance from last year, our fund balance expressed as a percentage of total expenditures was slightly in excess of 20%. We budgeted this year 14.3%, and I asked to have them update that based on this change. So even taking into consideration the additional quarter million dollars that we're asking them to spend this year, our projected budget surplus is going to be 16.4 percent, even greater than what we originally budgeted. It doesn't good. mean we need That's a, a good red thing. One. Thank you for those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, Chief, the 250 and then the Thank initial for those numbers. There's 240 next year is that prior to this to the discount? That that's in, including the discount. Right now, what we have spec'd out. Uh, is about 516,000 and with the prepayment discounts okay. uh, it brings it down to about 497. Okay, that includes so, it. Okay. Yeah, that that would be total total cost. Any other questions for the chief? Very good. This is a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion carries 7-0. Item L, presented for City Council's consideration, is a request to approve a law enforcement and emergency service agreement between the City of Muscatine and the City of Fruitland. The City of Fruitland has contracted police services from the City of Muscatine for the last several years, uh, with the current contract expiring in July 2012. Uh, it is staff's recommendation that City Council approve the new agreement, which will expire June 30th, 2015. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Uh, Osama? Second. Second. Jeanette, discussion, Council? 
Also voice vote. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item M. The Muscatine Community School District re requested pivotal, pivotal stop signs. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Pivotal stop signs at the Bonnie Drive and Mulberry Avenue intersection for better traffic flow for vehicles exiting the high school premises at this location. The cost estimate for reconstructing Bonnie Drive and widening it widening it is $45,000. The traffic committee reviewed this option and determined that the pivotal stop signs would still be necessary in order to meet the goals and it is also unclear which organization would be responsible for the $45,000. After a 30 plus day, uh, days of trial, there, ha there has been a reduction in the stacking time from 24 minutes to 13 minutes. A crosswalk for children has been maintained and there has been no significant adverse effect on Marbury Avenue's traffic flow. It is the traffic committee's recommendation to continue the use of the pivotal stops uh, at this intersection. Further, the committee does not recommend widening the Bonnie Drive intersection at this time. Uh, at this time, city council would take action to continue the use of the pivotal signs at the Bonnie Drive and Marbury Avenue intersection. That would be in the form of a motion, I believe, folks. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Osama. Second. Second by Tom. Any discussion, Council? We have a couple of folks here tonight from the school district, uh, specifically uh, traffic flow and the traffic department. Uh, Don or Jeff, either of you gentlemen want to uh, address Council? Jeff Miller, Mustine School District. First Mayor, City Council, I'd like to thank you once again for allowing me to speak on behalf of the Bonnie Drive Mulberry three-way stop sign issue. John Lutz, City Engineer, and I have put together a short PowerPoint with some information and stats over the last month to demonstrate the changes made by installing the three-way stop at the intersection. <clears throat> the Bonnie Drive problems. Excessive stacking time on Bonnie Drive at arrival and dismissal for vehicles leaving the high school. Number two, left turns on the Mulberry is very difficult because continuing Mulberry traffic does not have to stop. This, this slide here is an overhead view that shows you the stacking time from Mulberry to the Bonnie Drive parking lot. Uh, when the high school is released, you can get a stack time within two minutes and lasting anywhere up to 24 minutes. The goals, decrease exit time, maintain safety for pedestrians and children, and maintain traffic flow on Mulberry. The council uh, directives, Provide cost estimates for widening Bonnie Drive to accomplish a left and right hand lane turn. Two, move temporary stop signs from Mulberry School to Bonnie Drive for one month and report on traffic conditions. Uh, John Lott, City Engineer. We looked at this problem about a year ago and uh, at our traffic committee and I prepared a uh, uh, plan that would allow two lanes of traffic going out of Bonnie Drive, one for turning left and the other turning right. It requires widening the road somewhat and doing some pavement removal, utility relocations, land acquisition, tree removal, paving and sidewalk, and cost estimate for that is approximately $45,000. <clears> that includes land acquisition? <coughs> That doesn't include a lot for land acquisition. I think there was about 2,500 for that. The traffic report. Compare conditions before and after moving the temporary stop signs from Mulberry School to Bonnie Drive. The stack time. Vehicles exiting the high school onto Bonnie Drive came stacked uh, let me back up here, Bonnie Drive, and became stacked at the Mulberry intersection during peak traffic hours. Arrivals 8 to 8.30 and dismissals from 3.30 to 4. 
Here again is the stack time that we're talking about. That red line indicates where we're talking about. And this is the stack times here. If you look at the first two bars, September 5th and 6th, this is prior to the stop signs being moved. The numbers in the middle of the bars indicate the amount of cars. So you had 24 minutes and 23 minutes, 165 to 160 cars on those first two days. You follow the bars down after the signs were moved, you see the stack time decrease and the amount of cars basically staying the same. The result, we moved the crosswalks to the west side of Bonnie Street uh, Drive and the school district is basically maintaining that with a crosswalk at their own expense. There is no significant adverse effect on mulberry flow. The most uh, traffic backup you'll see on a regular basis may be three to four cars at one time. Uh, the result, we reduced stacking time from 24 minutes to as low as 13 minutes or 54%. We reduced, like I, like I indicated to you when I came to you a month ago, I thought we might be able to do this if we were able to move it. We were able to reduce the duration of those stop signs being turned in the morning from two hours to an hour and 15 minutes. In the afternoon, you're able to do it from two hours down to 55 minutes. Uh, in the last month of this study, uh, I've had numerous parents, students, neighbors, and staff tell me what a positive difference that this has made. I've also received letters uh, in support. In closing, the school district is asking the city council to allow the stop signs to stay where they are currently positioned. I want to thank you all. Council, any questions for uh, Mr. Miller? When you reduce the times, the stop signs are there. You, you didn't see any, I mean, it was just as adequate, or the, the time was just as short as, as the longer times. Yes, it was, it, it was perfect. Nothing, we, we didn't change, we didn't put anybody in jeopardy or anything. It was, it worked real well. I might disagree with that a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had a close call at, at that intersection during this process. A uh, young man was coming out of uh, Bonnie Drive and <coughs> failed to note that uh, uh, the, the stop signs were uh, not stopped on Mulberry at that point in time. So, you know, I, I've talked to Randy a little bit. We, we may put up some additional you know, warning or notice in, in the short term to remind folks coming out of Bonnie Drive that, <coughs> uh, that it's not a four-way four stop all of the time. Um, just to, to remind folks that, you know, to keep an eye out when you're coming out of there because th that's the problem with those pivotal signs. Those, 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 uh, you got to remember that they are of a temporary nature, so, but. And, and I, I would agree with that, but it's like anything else over time. Right. Hopefully it, it will adjust. I think, I think the main issues here were, uh, the stacking time as well as the safety and it seems to me that you guys at the traffic committee accomplished both and I think the traffic committee should be commended on on this project here so uh, thanks for bringing this uh, to council here and uh, wishing you more success thanks thank again. you I did notice today though that the in the term was significant effect to Mulberry traffic because I pulled off and took a picture when I pulled on Bonnie Drive because there was a significant, I felt, number of vehicles stacked on Mulberry heading out of uh, west, basically heading west. Uh, and the picture after I got around Bonnie Drive until there was probably 13 vehicles lined up uh, waiting to access and during that time frame, that was probably about 315. The high school hadn't even let out yet, but the signs have to be turned by three o'clock for the elementary school. So between three o'clock and four is when they have to be turned and they've got 55 minutes, which if it's down to that, that's, that's, that's better uh, because we have had comments over the years of signs being turned when the um, uh, 
individual responsible, mainly the, the janitor, uh, 5.30 in the morning uh, over on uh, Fulham Avenue and previously. And that's when we decided that we set a time frame from 7 to 9 in the morning and, and what is it, 2 to 4 in the afternoon. But if they're trying to squeeze it down to where that's their turn, the minimal amount of time, that will help. But I do take offense to the significant stacking or not a problem on Mulberry because there is a problem. It's not two or three cars. No, Maybe two or three cars when you guys were there, but when I was in the stack, there had to be at least 15 to 20 at that one time today. Just a random shot, maybe I... Every time I have to go home for some reason, leave a job to go home, I look at my watch and it always is right about 3.15 in the afternoon for some stupid reason, and I'm always getting caught up in traffic, so. I, I, I guess I can only tell you, Councilman, that uh, the, the dates that I stood out there, that was what I saw. I understand that. And, Uh, one of the things that we'll be looking at in the future when we uh, work on Mulberry, uh, we'll take a look at the intersection and <clears throat> consider uh, additional through lanes on Mulberry and starting to add three lanes before you get to Mulberry and Hauser intersection. And uh, so those sorts of things will be addressed <coughs> in the future. The traffic committee can further look at the Hauser-Mulberry intersection to see if there's anything that could be done in the short term. But uh, we will be addressing that when we, when we redo Mulberry from Hauser out to the bypass. Very good. Yes. Anyone else, Council? Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff, uh, folks, we have a motion on the floor and a second. This is a voice vote, uh, and I believe the motion is to, to leave the signs as they are right now at the intersection of Bonnie Drive and Mulberry. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries 7-0. <laughs> okay, all the way down to item 15. Any other business? No. Then, uh, oh, I skipped over 14. Uh, my apologies. We'll begin uh, communications council comments uh, with Councilman Lorette. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Fran commented to me before the meeting that she saw my son in front of the house raking leaves this evening. Uh, and I commented to her that he was in front because I was in back. Uh, and that is because I forgot that our pass for leaf collection is tomorrow. So I'd like to give everybody a friendly reminder to go out to the city website and check the zone that your neighborhood is in and make sure you know the dates that the leaf collection passes are in your neighborhood so that you don't end up the night before the leaf pass out in the rain breaking leaves. And the other comment I'd like to make is uh, just to wish everyone a safe Halloween uh, since we won't be back in session till November. Very good, thank you. Phil. Nothing at this time, you're Scott. on. Our leaves pick up in our neighborhood is next Wednesday. So I'll try to remember that. Nothing else. Thank you. Osama. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Two weeks absence and you have no comment tonight. Uh, I'll keep it to myself tonight. Okay. So thank you. Councilman Bynum. No comments tonight, Your Honor. Very good. Jeanette. Could I ask Greg, Greg, could, how is the Fridley Theater coming along? Is that on in a timely oh. fashion? Because originally he wanted to start in December. Originally wanted to be done by the end of January in order to receive those digital cre credits. I've talked uh, with uh, Frid Russ Fridley and uh, with their, um, uh, most recently with their bank, we received the bond for the, for the project here last week um, as well. And as far as I've heard to date, they're on track to still complete by the end of January. Wow, thank you. It's quite a, quite a difference in the view out there uh, with the uh, yeah. concrete up. Thank you. Very good. Tom? Nothing this evening, Your Honor. Okay. Greg? Uh, nothing else, Your Honor. Brittany? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, invite everyone to uh, Krieger Motor Company's uh, uh, 
location, their General Motors store, Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, kind of a monumental event here in Muscatine. A uh, dedication will take place, uh, renaming of the Highway 61 bypass, beginning basically at Kruger Motor Company and extending on down to Dick Drake Way. Uh, that portion of the highway will be renamed uh, the Douglas King Memorial Expressway. Uh, if you're not familiar with who Douglas King uh, was, uh, Doug was first listed as missing in action December, actually Christmas Day, 1968, and uh, subsequently later uh, uh, determined to be killed in action. And uh, the dedication ceremony on his behalf takes place Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. So the public is invited to that ceremony. Uh, there will be several dignitaries there to include uh, Senator Hahn, Congressman Lobsack, uh, Representative uh, Guy Vanderlinden, uh, Representative Jeff Kaufman, Representative Tom Sands. Uh, and actually, three, four of the members of, of, of this distinguished group uh, include three past and one current mayor of the city of Muscatine. So it's a who's who of mayors in the city of Muscatine. But in any case, you're all invited to attend that ceremony. Uh, personal invite from me, okay? Uh, now we'll go back to any other business council. Is there so a motion <clears throat> to adjourn? So, is it adjourn?